me and my son Zane, we have uh, recently, we've been kind of binge watching, watching here and there, uh, the show King of Queens. Uh, it was popular in the late 90s and early, early 2000s. We both like Kevin James. Uh, a lot. He's a funny guy. And his character is named Doug in the show, and he's married to a woman named Carrie. And um, they're looking into insurance, and they have this insurance agent that they're meeting with in their home. And he starts talking about these upgrades, and he, uh, he's talking them into it, and, and they ask him, well, do you, think it's, do, you think it's, do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's necessary to do this upgrade? And and he tells them that he believes the argument for the upgrade is fairly uh, specious. And the problem is, is that Doug and Carrie have no idea what the word specious means. And they don't want to admit it to him, so <laughs> rather than humble themselves, uh, Doug begins to distract the insurance agents with a story, and Carrie runs behind the couch to the bookshelf, and she grabs a dictionary, and she's quickly thumbing through it, looking for the word uh, specious. And so finally, she discovers it. She closes the dictionary, and she comes back and gathers herself. And she had discovered that it meant uh, something that is superficially plausible, but actually it's wrong. And they said, well, uh, since uh, specious means that it could be right, but it's actually wrong, uh, we think we're going we're gonna to take a pass. And so... Uh, they, they ended up looking good in, in the end, and he didn't know. But not understanding words can get, us into, uh, can get us into trouble sometimes, as we saw in the example of Carrie and, and Doug. Uh, but for us this morning, one of, the, one of those words, a very important word, is, is faith. Uh, it's a word that seems simple enough. In fact, it's right there at the crux of Christianity and, and, and the gospel, but we're going to find this morning uh, that upon closer examination, there's a certain complexity to uh, that, that word uh, faith in the Bible that matters greatly in terms of our uh, relationship with, with God. So let's dig into that. It's not that faith has different meanings altogether. It's that the word faith uh, doesn't totally encompass the Greek term pistis. The English word faith doesn't totally encapsulate the word uh, pistis. And we also find that uh, the English word faith itself, over the last like 500 years, it's even taken on a slightly uh, different meaning. And so its, its original meaning has been uh, altered a little bit. I mean, it's, it's the reason that that um, an atheist like a biologist uh, Richard Dawkins, he can, he can uh, state that faith is a cop-out. It's, it's, it's ignoring uh, the, the evidence because faith is, has come to mean uh, for many it's, it's, a, it's a blind acceptance of something. But I think we'll find this morning that that's not what, what faith uh, is. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, that uh, faith is the assurance of things that are hoped for. It's the conviction of, of things uh, not seen. Um, I have the amplified version here in my notes. It says, faith is the assurance, that is the confirmation or the, the title deed of things that we, we, we hope for. So it's the assurance of, of the, 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 the Jesus saves and he's bringing us into uh, his kingdom. It's the proof of things that we do not see, and it is the conviction of their reality. In other words, faith is uh, perceiving as fact what is not revealed to the senses. Peter says, uh, as he writes to the church, he says that, that we the apostles, we didn't follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We actually walked with Jesus. We, we actually camped with Jesus. We ate with Jesus. We drank with, with uh, Jesus. We saw uh, Jesus resurrected. We saw him ascend into glory 
to the right hand of the Father. So we, we actually experience this Jesus. And now you can say this secondhand. We, we didn't actually witness Jesus, but we have eyewitness testimony in the Bible. And, and remember what, what, what Jesus tells uh, uh, Thomas. He says that uh, blessed are those who, who uh, uh, don't see and believe. And so going back to, the, to our uh, Hebrews text, it's, it's the conviction of things Things currently not not seen. Paul had a, um, a, a habit. It was his um, it was his custom to uh, enter into the synagogues when he would enter into a new town, and he would start preaching the gospel there. But it says in in Acts, it says that he reasoned with them uh, from the scriptures. So. That means that our faith is reasonable. There is reasons to believe, as he pointed to, to all the prophecies that pointed to, to Jesus as, as the Messiah. And he did this with both Jews and Greeks. He tried to persuade them. So it wasn't a blind faith. He was trying to give them reasons to receive Jesus as the Messiah. So our faith is very much reasonable. There are reasons why we believe what we believe. And so we come back to the question, what is, what is faith? We find that faith can, can be actualized in, in uh, different ways, right? And I said it's not that it's separate. There, there's necessarily separate terms, but the, the term faith has different facets uh, to it. It reminds me of uh, one of my favorite cartoons. Uh, actually, it was my favorite cartoon as a, as a child. I loved uh, Masters of the Universe, He-Man. Um, anybody my age that was He-Man? No? You're all, you're all either older than me or younger than me. Uh, She-Ra, there you go. Crickets. Well, uh, sh- show, showing my age a little bit, but Masters of the Universe is the bomb. And, and some of you have Netflix. It's being remade, a cartoon, and it's going to come out soon. And uh, hope, I, hope, I hope it's done just. I will watch the whole series. Yes, I will. Oh, that was uh, Thundercats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thundercats was really good, too, and so was Transformers, but couldn't touch He-Man. But anyways, I, I want to stay on point here, Luke, and because <laughs> y'all are going to miss the whole illustration if I don't stay. You know, I'll forget what I'm talking about, knowing me. But uh, one of the characters on... Um, on um, Kanan, you're sending a text, man, and my thing wasn't on vibrate. It's busted. Uh, <laughs> was it? Okay, I'll, I'll hey, how, how about I'll look at that later? All right, I'll, I'll check it out later. <laughs> so, faith has many facets to it, and uh, I had this toy figure. I, I can't remember if he was a good guy or a bad guy, though, but his name was Many Faces. Yeah, and so he had a monster face, he had a human face, and he had a robot face. And I think depending on his mood, it would change uh, to one of, those, one of those faces. And his toy, there was a little dial that you would twist, and it would change to the different face. But it was, it was, it was one person. He just had many, many facets. So faith is kind of sort of like that. Uh, one of the illustrations I used when we were in group uh, the other week is, is, is faith is like this column. It's, 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 it's one idea, right? That's faith. But it has different, it has different facets uh, to it. So let's, let's take a look. The first facet that I want to talk about this morning is, is faith is, at, at, at its basic level is, is a belief. It's, it's a knowledge. And I, I think that's one of the elements that hasn't been lost uh, today, I think most people would say that faith is knowledge, and it is it is believing in in something. Most historians uh, agree that Abraham Lincoln was the greatest uh, greatest president. Now, people are welcome to have different opinions, but most historians would say that that Abraham Lincoln is the greatest uh, president in U.S. history, and that comes from a knowledge of. Uh, U.S. history. It comes from knowing things about Abraham Lincoln and knowing things about uh, our, our history in the, the U.S. And so we find that faith itself comes from, it comes from hearing. It comes from uh, learning. As Paul says in Romans chapter 10, he says, 
How then will they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without somebody uh, preaching to them? Now, some people take this passage like Wooden literally saying that the, the, the gospel has to actually be spoken for somebody to receive it. I think you're missing the point of what's going on here. The, the, the gospel has to be learned. It has to be taught. You have to understand if, you, you know, you don't receive the gospel. You don't, rec- you don't learn about Jesus and God's story by osmosis. It has to be taught. People have to be taught the gospel in order for them to receive it. And that's the point that, that uh, Paul is making here. So he says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ uh, uh, preached or or, or taught. And so knowledge, we find, is an essential element of faith. It is the persuasion that something is, is true. But faith, though, it includes uh, in it a, 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 an assent to, to that truth. That means that, that it includes an agreement, an approval of that truth. It's not just uh, knowledge of the truth. It's an approval of that truth. It's, and so it goes beyond just a mere understanding. We see in Romans uh, 10, 9, Paul says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so it's a knowledge and an understanding that God raised Jesus from, from the dead. In John chapter 20, uh, John, as he is uh, wrapping up his, his gospel uh, story, his version of it, he says, that Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not all written in this book, but these that I wrote down, they're written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Remember, you have to know uh, U.S. history in order to say that, that Abraham is, um, Abraham, yeah, Abraham Lincoln, I was thinking Abraham, Old Testament, that, <laughs> that honest Abe, Abraham Lincoln is the greatest president in, in U.S. history. Um, so John wrote these things down to show people that they would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. So that by believing and knowing uh, you can have life in, in Jesus Christ. But the problem is, is that even the demons, the Bible says, they believe too. And so faith has to go beyond a, a knowledge and understanding because every demon knows that Jesus is the Son of God, right? They know that He is Lord. They know that He is King. They know that He is Savior. They know exactly who He is. So it's it, it has to go beyond just an understanding of who Jesus is. Faith is, is trusting, right? It's trusting. It's conviction. It's, 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 it's an assurance, right? And so as a child, I knew who my dad was. I knew he was my daddy. But I knew when I was at my football games and at my different events, I could look up and I could trust that my dad was going to be sitting in the stand. <laughs> and I had an assurance because that's the type of dad that I had. He was, he was always, wasn't a perfect man, right? There's only one perfect man, but he was, always, he was always there. And so I had an assurance, I had a trust that my dad was going to be there. And so back to Hebrews 11.1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It is the conviction of things not seen. Back when this whole faith story began to get off the ground uh, with the story of Abraham, not Lincoln this time, but the one I was thinking about a little while ago, Abraham in the Old Old Testament, God calls Abraham out of this pagan family and he says, hey, you're going to worship the one true God. You're going to you're going to follow me, and he tells Abraham that out of you, I'm going to build a people for my own. I'm going to make you to a great nation. Uh, I'm going to bless uh, the world, the nations uh, through you, and I'm going uh, to make your offspring, uh, your descendants as, num- as numerous as, as the stars in the sky and the sand in the seashore. And Abraham's like, wait, 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 hold up. God, as you can see, I'm a little old here. And my wife, uh, she's not getting any younger uh, either. And 
we don't have any kids. How are you going to accomplish this? Maybe you want to, maybe you want to do it through, through my servant. Maybe I can take him in as my own son, and, and you, can, you can bring about this, this, these people uh, uh, through, through him. And God's like, no, 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 no. Abraham, I meant what I said, and it's, it's, it's going to happen through your own son that's going to come from your body. And so in Genesis 15, 6, the Bible says that Abraham believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. So when it says believed, it's not just the knowledge, it's not just believing what he says, acknowledging what he says, but it's trusting God. It's trusting what he said, and when he trusted him, he counted that to him as righteousness. By being right with God, we're good, right? <laughs> you, you, you trust me, right? We've got that intimate uh, relationship. You're a part of my family. You belong to me. In John 5, 24, um, uh, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death unto life. So whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me, that means, that means that whoever trusts the Father who sent me, whoever, whoever trusts my word. It's not just the mere, you, you know the difference, of course, it says hear, uh, hear right here, but I, I've made a distinction between hearing somebody and, and listening, right? And this uses the word hear, but this is for my own uh, a distinction. I, I, I tend to distinguish between I can hear somebody, I can hear my wife, but not really be listening to what she's saying, right? I can be hearing somebody who disagrees with me, but not really listening and trying to, to understand. And so what Jesus is saying is not just hearing his words, he's actually talking about uh, uh, listening to his words. And when you listen, there's an intent to, to either understand or to act upon um, those words. So it's a, a trusting in God and trusting in the words of Jesus Christ. In Matthew uh, 15, 28, Jesus comes upon uh, a woman who, whose uh, daughter is, is, is demon-possessed, and she cries out to him, O oh, son of David, please have mercy uh, on, on, on me. And so she acknowledges that he is the, the Messiah, but it's not just an acknowledgement. She cries out because she realizes that he has the power to have mercy on her and her, her daughter. And, and what does he reply to her? He says, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed, was healed instantly. And so what does faith look like in this instance? It is, it is a trust in the abilities of Jesus Christ, Right? It's not, a, it's not a trust in, in, in the healing itself. It's a trust in the one who, who heals. And she realizes that he is the one who can heal, the only one that can cast that demon out of her, her daughter. Matthew 8.10, uh, Jesus uh, comes upon a Roman centurion. He's uh, one of the leaders of the Roman, Roman army. And, and this man, he acknowledges Jesus' authority to heal. Like, he can even speak it, and, and he can heal. Um, and Jesus marvels, and he said to those who followed him, he says, Truly I tell you, no one in Israel have I found such faith. This man trusted in the authority of Jesus Christ and his ability. And then finally, in Matthew uh, chapter 14, you remember the story of, of Jesus' disciples there out at sea at night, and, and they look up, and they're fearful because they think they see a ghost because there's this man who is walking on the water uh, towards the boat. He tells them to fear not. It is, it is Jesus. Remember, Peter gets all excited, and he's like, oh, Jesus, Jesus, call me out into the water so that I can walk on the water. And so he, he calls him out, and at first things are great, but as soon as he, he gets on the water, he starts to fear, and he immediately begins to sink. And you remember what Jesus says to him. He says, oh, you have little faith, Peter. Why, why did you doubt? And again, this faith, it's not faith in his ability to walk on water. It's faith that Jesus has the power to make him walk on water. And so he's doubting that Jesus is who he says he is in that moment, and he begins to sink. So faith is not just knowledge and belief, it's, it's, it's trusting. It's trusting Jesus. It's a conviction. It's, a, it's an assurance of who uh, Jesus is and what his plan is for us.
But faith goes beyond that, and I think now we're really getting to the nitty-gritty as far as is, um, where faith, I believe, has been lost somewhat in our day. Faith is, is, is an allegiance. It's a, it's, a, it's a faithfulness. It's loyalty. It's, it's fidelity, you know. I don't just believe that Courtney is my, is my wife, but I trust her. But I don't just trust my wife. I am faithful to my wife. And so there's a fidelity uh, between us. And so, but with Jesus, uh, although he is, the, he is the husband of the church, right? But he is also, he is also our, our Lord. And so Jesus, he starts his ministry by declaring what? He says, the time is fulfilled. Next slide. The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. This was a call to uh, allegiance to the people of Israel to, uh, to turn from their sinful ways and to embrace the kingdom of God in the person of Jesus Christ. I am coming and I am bringing the kingdom of God with me. Turn from your evil ways, turn from your idols, and give your allegiance to me. Matthew 10, 32 Jesus says, so everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. And again, remember the demons acknowledge uh, Jesus as the Son of God. So this means more than just acknowledging. This This is someone who is not afraid to stand and say that Jesus is my Lord. Right? Jesus is my Savior, and I'm not ashamed of that. It's an allegiance. My allegiance is to is to Jesus. Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be, will be saved. And what does that mean? Uh, it, it's not just a calling out. It is a calling out, right? But it's acknowledging that Jesus is who he says he is, and he is now my king. That's an allegiance. Romans uh, uh, chapter 1, Paul says that Jesus uh, was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by His resurrection of the dead. So He's declared to be the Son of God in power as the Holy Spirit raised Him from the dead. He says, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of His name among all nations. In other words, to bring about uh, the faith that, that, that brings... To bring about faith that, that brings about itself a, 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 an act of o, o, obedience. Second uh, Thessalonians 1.8 speaks of those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. So faith is something that we are, they are, we are walking in, right? When we, it's not about works, but as you've heard before, when we, when we call upon Jesus, when we're faithful to Jesus, when we seek him as, as Lord, we live for him as our, as our king. In uh, Titus chapter 2, interesting passage here. Paul writes to Titus, and he's, he's, he's um, addressing bondservants, which are slaves, and he says that they're to be submissive to their own masters and everything. Uh, they are to be well-pleasing and not argumentative. Now, we don't have the time to get into uh, slavery in, in the Bible, but just know that Paul was not for slavery. <laughs> when, hey, Paul, couldn't, Paul had to use wisdom. You can't just go and just literally turn everything on, on its head. Those, those are things that the Holy Spirit had to, to work out over time. And so what does Paul do, Right? Uh, at one point, he says, if you have the opportunity for freedom, then you should uh, obtain, obtain your freedom. But in the meantime, uh, you need to, to live a life that is well-pleasing to God to be a, a witness uh, to your masters. He says, not pilfering, but showing all good faith. That is uh, faithfulness, right? So that in everything, they, uh, they may adorn the doctrine of our Savior. So they may see how they live, right? And the, their masters would turn, turn to Jesus. I think there's a lot of good stuff here uh, for our day in this situation 
uh, that we're in, right? It's not, it's not that we, we, we fight for our freedoms, right? But we, we do it in such a way that, that honors, honors God, right? And, and, and that brings people, that is attractive, that brings people to Jesus when they see the love of Jesus working, working out of us. But this passage right here, it makes no sense if it, if it means just to believe. It's a faithfulness, right? It's a fidelity, right? In Matthew 23, 23, Jesus says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Here's where he's laying into the, the religious hypocrites. He says, Woe to you, you hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. Remember, Jesus is looking for people's heart, right? He's not looking for, you know, uh, that we carry our, 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 our Bible or that we pray in public or that we uh, attend church. All those things can be done in faithfulness. All those things can be very spiritual. But he says you neglect the, 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 um, the weightier matters of the law, which is justice and mercy and faithfulness, right? Uh, those are things of, of, uh, of the heart, and faith is something that you, that you walk in, that you abide in. Uh, he says these you ought to have done, right? You still you know, tithe and attend church and, and, and read your Bible and all that good stuff without neglecting the others. He wants, he wants our heart. So we find that, that faith, uh, in terms of, of faithfulness and loyalty and allegiance, it's not a one-time decision. Faith is a duration, right? Faith is something that we continue, that we continue to do. An uh, example of that is right here uh, is, is Jesus uh, speaks to the, 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 the church in, in Smyrna in, in Revelation chapter 2. He says, do not fear uh, what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison that you may be tested. Again, this is another message, but my goodness, I, I've been wondering here lately <laughs> if, if God has allowed the devil to throw us in, in prison, if, if the church... The church, not just the world being tested, but the church itself being tested, right? Because I believe that the, the, there's, some, there's some warts in our, in our hearts and in our souls that God is wanting to, to sift out. And I believe that this is a time of testing that we are in to see where our faith really is. If we're going to continue to live for Jesus and to love God and to love, to love people. Um, but anyways, we're talking about the church in Smyrna here um, you're about to be thrown into uh, to prison. You're about to be tested for 10 days. You will have tribulation. But what does he say? Be faithful unto death. That's what I think Jesus wants us to do today is to be faithful, even unto death, to be faithful. How do we be faithful? It's not just saying, hey, Jesus, you're the son of God. It's by walking in that faith. It's by obeying his commandments, right? And so you got to go back to the Gospels, right? What does the Holy Spirit say to do? How do we love one another? How do we live this thing out? How do we put others above ourself? How do we live out the gospel, right? Be faithful unto death. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep declaring Jesus. Don't deny his name. Keep living for him even unto death, no matter how much the pressure comes on. Don't give up, and I will give you the crown of life. That's his reward. Revelation 14, 12 says, Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. So they're going through a time of tribulation, a time of persecution. Here is a call to endure, saints. We too are called to, to endure. And so those are the elements, those are the facets of, of, of faith. And so what does is, what is saving faith look like? Let's take a look at Romans chapter 1. Apostle Paul, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. What is the gospel? N.T. Wright defines it this way. It's the good news that there is one God who now claims the world as his own through the crucified and risen Jesus. So Jesus in is in charge, right? God is, is taking back the reins through his son, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. And it's power, it's, it's, it's got benefits. <laughs> when you believe that, right? When you trust in that Jesus, when you look to that Jesus, it has benefits that are enacted by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? When we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, comes to dwell 
in us. He takes up residence uh, as, as his temple, right? And he, he renews us. He, he makes us new creation. So Paul says, For I am not ashamed of this good news, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to everyone who gives their allegiance to Jesus. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. Now, some scholars have taken this part of, of, of this passage here and have said, that just means, um, um, yeah, verse 17, for, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Some scholars are just taking it, well, maybe that just means beginning to end. It's all about, it's all about faith. But I, I found this interesting uh, that from faith, some scholars believe that the from faith is actually talking about Jesus' faith and his faithfulness, right? Uh, he was, he was, the, he was uh, the true Israel. Everything that Israel failed to do, Jesus as the true Israel, he was totally faithful to the Father all the way unto, unto death. And by his faithfulness, right? So it starts with his faithfulness, and, and it filters through our faithfulness, our allegiance to Jesus, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. He's quoting Habakkuk, the prophet Habakkuk there. And Habakkuk, uh, if, you, if, you, if you go back to that passage in Habakkuk, he, in context, he's talking about fidelity. He's talking about um, uh, uh, loyalty uh, to, to God. And, and in Habakkuk, it says the righteous shall live by his, his faith, right? By his fidelity to God. But notice that Paul right here, he takes out the word his. It's not, it's not in there. And it says, the righteous shall live by faith. And so what, what, what may be implied here is, is that uh, Paul did that intentionally. So because it's, it's, it's from faith to faith that he means not only the faithfulness, our faith, right, but also the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. So we shall live as righteous people, we, we not only live by our faith, but we live in, uh, uh, in, our, in our faith in Jesus' faithfulness. I hope that wasn't too much of a tongue twister and that, in that uh, I didn't confuse you guys too much. The righteousness shall live by our faith in the faithfulness of, of Jesus. That's what, I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to say. Key point here. Our faithfulness... Our faithfulness is imperfect, right? I think that's what, <laughs> when, we, when we hear these things, when we hear that faith is about faithfulness and a loyalty and allegiance, we realize uh, how much we fail, and we realize that our, our faithfulness is so imperfect at times. You know the good news? So was Abraham's. So was Abraham's. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, it's called the, the Hall of Faith. The Bible doesn't call it that. We... We, we nicknamed it the, the Hall of Faith, and it has all these great people in the Old Testament um, and even a little afterwards, these great people of faith. But if you know the Bible, if you've actually read the Old Testament and you come to Hebrews 11, you're like, what in the world is going on? These, these guys, some of these guys screwed up royally, right? And they're called uh, great men and women of, 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 of faith. And here's the thing. Abraham, he believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And then what does he go do? He goes and takes his, uh, his servant woman. His wife gives him the servant woman, Hagar, and they try to uh, uh, make a child through her because they're, not believe they're doubting God, right? They, they find themselves doubting God for a time that he's going to provide a, God, uh, a, a, a child through Sarah. And so they try to bring it about themselves. God says, no, 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 I've already told you. It's going to come through Sarah. And so he believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, right? And he was faithful to God, but at times his faith waned, right? At times they, they doubted and thanked God for that because my faith is imperfect. My faithfulness is imperfect. But here's the thing. Jesus's was not. He was totally faithful. He, he, he did everything that his father had sent him to do, and he completed the work. And because he completed the work, Jesus is the forgiving king. He's not just the king. He's the forgiving king. And so through our imperfect faithfulness, we find ourselves in Jesus Christ without condemnation and heirs to the kingdom of God as his children. 
So in a nutshell, faith is leaning on Jesus in, in, in confidence, trusting in his finished work, trusting in his power, in his wisdom, in his goodness, in his purpose, and in his plan. So what does he require? Jesus, as this, as this forgiving king, he requires one thing. It's that we believe that our allegiance and our loyalty and our faithfulness and trust, all those things, facets of one idea, and that's faith. Faith alone, right? We are saved by the grace of God through faith alone in Jesus Christ. It's just understanding what faith is, right? Right? It's trusting. It's being, it's being, uh, it's being having our loyalties in the right place. It's being allegiant, our allegiance belonging to Jesus alone. That's what faith is. And then you go back to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. There's a time I've seen videos in the past with uh, a man who was um, going different places and, you know, store parking lots and whatnot, and he was uh, talking people into to, um, repeating a prayer after, after him to receive Jesus. And, and if you repeat this prayer after me, you can, you can receive uh, Jesus without little understanding, without little preaching of, of the gospel. And they, were repeated, uh, they would repeat that prayer after him, and he'd put another chink in his in his, in his armor that he brought another one to Christ. But that's not what faith is. It is as simple as that, right? But it has to come from, uh, from the heart. It has to be an ascent of that knowledge that you have learned, right? It has, it, you, it, it's realizing that Jesus is who he says he is. He's the Son of God. He is our Lord and King, and he is our Savior. And it's believing that, right? And you can't believe that without somebody teaching you that, <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so what, is your, what does your faith look like this morning? Does it look like that? That's the faith of the gospel, right? That's what, that's what the gospel calls us to do, is to trust Jesus, to give our loyalty to him and him alone. Amen. Amen.